Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to So What? Today, I'm going to be talking about some things that I've been sewing, and hopefully that can be some inspiration for you to get to the sewing machine and be creative today, or at least this week at some point. I am in full Valentine sewing mode. I have so many ideas. Um, I've got the back sight side of my heart quilt hanging today. That's kind of what I love about picking a backing fabric for something that is just as cute as what you have done on the front of the quilt because you can display it in a couple of different ways. So I don't know if you can tell, but it says love all over the backing fabric of this quilt. So cute. Absolutely love this quilt. Displaying it either way so you can see the front or the back. So maybe next week you can see the front again so that I change it up a little bit for you. <laughs> but at any rate, lots of ideas flowing in my brain with hearts and pinks and purples and reds. And I think Valentine's Day is a fun thing to sew for um, because you can give just little gifties to your coworkers, your friends, your kids, your kids' teachers things like that. You don't have to make a huge investment for Valentine's Day, but it's just a little something to say, I love you, or I'm thinking about you, or I appreciate you. Um, and it's just fun to decorate for all the holidays, isn't it? So today I have a fun project that looks complicated because of the fabric that we're using, but I'm going to be using some sulky products that actually make your life easier. So you're going to see just how quickly this can come together with the help of a few notions. All right, so before we get started, I wanna let everybody know we're having our amazing rolls and bolts sale right now at sulky.com. All rolls and bolts of stabilizer are 35% off. This is an amazing, amazing deal. So it is time to stock up on the stabilizers that you use the most. If you're a tear easy person and you always go to tear easy because you usually work with stable quilting cotton fabrics, that kind of thing, when you're doing embroidery, grab it in a bolt because at 35% off, you won't want to miss this. I'm just, I'm telling you. Um, I work from bolts of stabilizer because you all know the sheer volume of projects I'm creating <laughs> on a weekly basis, let alone on a monthly basis. Uh, so I definitely work from the bolts. Uh, but sometimes I like to have those smaller width stabilizers so that it's easier for me to do those assembly line gifts and things like that. And that what I mean by that is, let's say I am sewing something for Valentine's Day and I'm making all my kids' teachers a little Valentine mug rug in the hoop or it's embroidered, what have you. I like to have the rolls as well that are the width of the hoops that I use most often. So either the 18 inch or the 12 inch if you work with smaller hoops and then you can easily just cut off the links that you need. The bolts make it a little bit harder to do that, but you do save a lot of money if you use one type of stabilizer, you know, a lot definitely grab it by the bolt, especially when we're having this crazy sale. Doesn't happen very often. All rolls and bolts, 35% off. So this is a big, big deal. Check it out. And I'm going to be using one of the stabilizers today. And we're not even doing machine embroidery. I know. What is happening? We always do machine embroidery here on So What? But today's project actually does not involve machine embroidery at all. You certainly could add it, and we will talk about that as well. Before we get to the project, I want to make sure everybody is registered for our embroidery sewing session. These videos will all hit on February 13th at sewingonline.sulky.com. This is one of our longer format sessions that we do with Designs by Juju. We only do these with her a couple times a year, and she created this project especially for this embroidery session. So it's a really cute 3D wall hanging. And the reason it's 3D is because we're kind of layering all of these freestanding pieces that we create in the hoop of our embroidery machine. 
and connecting them with buttons and buttonholes and ribbons. And you can swap, you know, different elements out, or you can just hang the bird, just hang the sign. Lots of different ways to customize this as we love with sewing. That's a one huge reason why all of us sew is because we can make things our own. And this project is really no different. If you grab up the kit, you will get all the fabrics that you see in this finished sample. You will also get the puffy foam that we are using for the structure of all of the freestanding pieces. It's way better than using something like a low loft batting or sometimes people use like a fleece interlining for things like this because it's not going to sag over time when you're hanging it. This puffy foam gives it a really, really great structure and feel to it. So that's that big roll of white puffy foam you see in the kit photo here, along with all of those beautiful fabrics by Riley Blake. Also the ribbons, the buttons, the stabilizer, and all those beautiful sulky threads. Everything is included in the kit and it's on sale now. So grab up the kit, register for the session, and then on February 13th, you will get an email saying everything's ready for viewing and you can go in and have an entirely self-taught or self-led rather class taught by Julie Treve of Designs by Juju. So I hope that you are all registered and that you will join us February 13th. It's not a live event like our webcasts and video casts are. So you don't need to tune in on that day and watch everything live. But that is just the day that everything will be available. Everything drops, so they say. So after that day, you can go in to sewingonline.sulky.com, watch whichever videos you want to watch, go through whichever lessons you want to watch. You can start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. You can start with lesson one and then go back in a couple days when you have a chunk of time and continue the course. However you want to take the session, is up to you. So it's a really unique way of experiencing this project and making sure that you have all the resources that you need to help you along the way. So there are written posts, there are all the designs for this wall hanging that you will load into your embroidery machine are included with purchase of the session. And also you will get all the videos and help from Julie and a Q&A at the end of each lesson where you can ask questions if you have them throughout the process. And we get back to you as soon as we can. So we are here for you every step of the way. We actually got a question this morning on our uh, Facebook page that somebody was asking, can I do this project if I'm a beginner? I've never done an in the hoop project. I was like, please do, because once you do an in the hoop project, you're going to be so hooked on them. When you do a project in the hoop of your embroidery machine, there's very little margin for error because the machine is doing most of the work for you. So as long as you follow the steps of when to place which material at which point in the design, you will have great success with this project. So Karen says, I got my kit for that ready to go. Nice. Lots of you saying hello and where you are watching from. I appreciate that. Crystal has her kit. Can't wait. Very nice. Okay. Be sure to keep putting your questions and comments in the live chat for today's live stream because I have a great giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching and commenting and giving me those emojis and engaging with me here on today's post. That's all you have to do to be eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a three yard pack of Sulky Solvi Stabilizer. I'd venture to say that Sulky Solvi is our best selling stabilizer of all time. And I'm actually gonna be using it on today's project. That's the stabilizer that I'm gonna focus on today. I'm gonna show you how to use it with some reverse applique when you're working with tricky fabrics. It really helps tame the nap, all kinds of things. We're gonna go over it uh, momentarily. But 
You don't just need stabilizers for machine embroidery. They're great for different quilt applications. They're great for different applique applications and even home decor, which is what I'm gonna show you today. All right, I'm having some trouble with my mouse. It does not want to move. So bear with me as I try to get the um, photos up here for you. So let's get to today's project. Mona is saying, I love the Solvi. Great giveaway. One of my favorite stabilizers, says Heather. Nice to see you, Heather. All right. Uh, what is the smallest hoop I can use? Okay. So I'm assuming you're talking about for the 3D spring wall hanging. That's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Um, you do need a five by seven hoop for the smallest size. You're going to get I think five sizes of embroidery design files. So you can make this 3D wall hanging up to a rather large size. And I'm completely blanking on what the finished size of the largest sizes that you can make. But you do need at least a five by seven hoop. If you have that size hoop, you can create all of your in the hoop sections, right? The bird, the birdhouse, the sign in, I think it's five hoopings, five hoopings. If you have larger hoops, then you have greater capabilities for using the other sizes. So there's a five by seven, a six by 10, an eight and a half by 12. Is that a standard hoop size? I can't remember. And then a nine by 14, whatever that hoop size is, nine-ish by 14. All of those sizes are included with the design files. So you can make a small uh, 3D wall hanging, or you can make a really large one if you happen to have a really large hoop. So it, it's a great value. The designs are valued at 20 bucks. So you're getting a lot, a lot with purchase of the session because you're getting the designs and the extra tutorials and an extra video on how to use software to personalize the sign. Your sign doesn't have to say home sweet home like this one does. It can say welcome spring, hello spring, welcome. It can have your last name on it. Um, it can say no soliciting. <laughs> that was one of the ideas we had last week. So we can personalize that sign or we don't have to sew the sign at all and we can just have the bird and the birdhouse as well. So again, lots of ways to personalize this. And thank you for asking about the hoops uh, because if you only have a machine that will, uh, in, or a hoop that is a four by four size, you won't be able to make the project. You do need a five by seven or larger hoop for that, um, for the 3D wall hanging. All right. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Cecilia says, I just purchased an embroidery machine and I cannot wait to take classes and learn more. Everybody, let's welcome Cecilia into the wonderful world of machine embroidery. I'm so excited for you. I remember when I did my very first embroidery project and I was hooked from the start. You know, I used to um, I used to work for a number of magazines, sewing magazines, and we had a magazine called Creative Machine Embroidery. And things around here. And when I became editor in chief of that magazine, I just dove into machine embroidery like you wouldn't believe. I read books. I just immersed myself into the world of machine embroidery. And I used to think it was really funny when I would read about people embroidering things like toilet paper. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I was like, how ridiculous is this? Why would you embroider toilet paper? Then I did my first embroidery or embroidery design. And I remember just looking around my office, like what else can I embroider next? grabbing things off the wall, taking the jean jacket off my chair. I was embroidering absolutely everything. So I was hooked from the start. I hope that you will be too. And definitely keep tuning in with us here at Sulky because we are here to make sure you have a great experience and great success with your embroidery designs. 
All right. <laughs> yes, it is an awesome deal on stabilizers. And thank you, Mindy. The largest is nine and a half by 14. That's the largest hoop size. And if you have that large hoop size, you can create a really large scale 3D wall hanging that would be really cool on your front door, um, et cetera. All right. Let's see. Lots of people uh, giving their tips and uh, chatting in the comments. Love it. Uh, Anita says, I need to check out the kit. I love sulky kits. My favorites are always the fall themed kits. I love sewing for fall also because the colors are just so rich and pretty. And even if, you know, you're in a place where the leaves don't change, you can make the leaves change inside your home by, you know, using some blendables threads and things like that and bringing the outdoors in. So I love that as well. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our fuzzy heart pillow. So I kind of got the idea for this pillow because our mega mystery box over the holidays, our 2023 mega mystery box had this wonderful Lux cuddle fabric inside the box. Now with that box, we provided a few project ideas for you to create using the items in your box. Now, of course, when you get a mystery box, you can choose to stock your sewing room with those items. You can make whatever you want out of those boxes. It's kind of like opening a box when you're on Chopped, right, on the Food Network. Just open it up and think to yourself, what can I do with this? And it's really fun to challenge yourself, maybe even get a box for your friend and say, what are you gonna make with the things inside? But we also give you some patterns and maybe designs, things like this, that you can create using the items if you're kind of out of ideas or you need that inspirational spark. So with this year's mystery box, we had this beautiful Lux Cuddle fabric. It's so plush. It is so nice and soft and it makes really great like baby blankets, um, you know, adult blankets. It's really great for like the center of a dog bed. Um, it's just so nice. You can make a really nice scarf or trim a hat with it. Great for the winter time and even moving into spring. Well, the one of the projects, actually two of the projects that we provided with the box was making a sleep mask out of this. So the outside of the sleep mask is made of this Lux Cuddle, and the inside is made with this nice satin fabric. So the satin fabric, of course, goes against your eyes and is nice and soothing. It's one of those fabrics that feels cool too, so it kind of like helps reduce the puffiness if you might have that. Um, and then we also included some sparkly elastic. I love glitter elastic, so cute. Um, to just kind of make this a little bit more high end, right? A little more luxurious feeling like you're going to the spa or what have you. So this sleep mask was one of the patterns. You got a sewing pattern for it. And then we also provided an in the hoop spa mask design that included embroidery embellishment. I know. Did you know you can embroider on fabrics like this, even though it's so super duper plush? And what an amazing end result. It's so, so pretty. I absolutely love it. It almost has like an embossed look to it. So at any rate, I thought to myself, what else can we do with this fabric? Because in that mystery box, you only got enough fabric to make basically one sleep mask. Um, not to mention this fabric came in a plastic bag because if you've ever worked with a fabric like this before, you know that as soon as you cut into it, it starts shedding all over the place. So we provided a piece that was big enough for either the sewing version of the mask or the in the hoop version of the mask. And it was enough fabric as well to create our fuzzy heart pillow. So this is just another idea that you could use this type of fabric for 
if you got hooked on it like I did with the mystery box. So, oh, also, for those of you who did not grab up a mystery box, we decided to keep them on sale for you. There's a few left over. And since I'm talking about it today, we have left it on sale so that you can grab up a mystery box at the amazing, amazing price. Now, I've given away a little bit of the mystery, so you'll know that you're getting the Lux Cuddle, the Satin Fabric, the Glittery Elastic, and these two patterns. But we'll just keep the rest of it a mystery for now. <laughs> and that way, when you grab up a box today while it's on sale, um, along with your rolls or bolts of stabilizer, whatever you're grabbing up for the sale today, uh, the rest of the box can still be a little bit of a mystery for you. All right, so what else can we do with Lux Cuddle, especially a smaller piece? If you've never worked with this fabric before, it can be kind of intimidating to make an entire blanket out of it, especially for that shedding factor. So why not start small, create something like this? What I love about this project is the Lux Cuddle like pops off of the surface of the pillow. So you get this great dimensional effect. It looks like a puffy heart. So cute. Um, my daughters are absolutely in love with the pillow. And so of course, like many things, I have to create a second one because I have twins and that's just, you know, par for the course. So I'm going to tell you how to tame the shed, how to tame the fabric while you're sewing it so that it lays nice and flat. And reverse applique is the perfect thing for this because the edges, uh, you know, what, what shed basically are going to be inside the pillow. And then our fabric edges are going to be on the outside. So this is a raw edge applique technique, um, raw edge reverse applique technique. Uh, but I'm going to also, you know, discuss some ways that you can um, do some different stitches so that you don't, you have less of a raw edge if that's more, you know, your jam. All right. So first things first, this heart template that is the correct size for this size of pillow, which now you're all going to ask me, what is the size of the pillow? Uh, so let me measure it because I don't remember. Um, it's a pretty standard pillow size, so you could use a pillow insert. Uh, let's see, mine finishes at 14 inches square. Uh, so you could change up the dimensions if you have a 16 inch pillow form. Um, your heart will just be a little bit smaller if you use the Sulky Heart Template. If you're looking for this heart template, it's on the Sulky blog. I link to the blog post directly in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing all the featured products and all the links for everything I'm talking about today, click on that little see more or show more button and the whole description will pop out. You'll find links to everything that you need. So within the blog post, you'll find this heart template that is sized for this 14 inch pillow or 13 inch uh, pillow form if you want to create, if you want to use a pillow form. Um, but you could just as easily create your own heart template. We all kind of know how to do that just from making Valentine's growing up. So you'll fold your, you know, paper in half, freehand draw one side of your heart, open it up, and there you go. So you can size your heart however you need to. But if a template helps you, you can grab this off the Sulky blog and print it out and use it. So you'll need two fabrics, one for your pillow front and one for your pillow back. Of course, you can use the same exact fabric. Um, I had these two fat quarters in my stash, so my front is different than my back, but they coordinate. They're the exact same shade of this sort of magenta. So I kind of like the crafty look of that, but you certainly can use the same fabric for the front as you do on the back. And you can also use different substrates. You don't have to use Quilting cotton for this mixed with the cuddle, you can use, um, you know, like a fleece or something like this that would, you know, really complement the fuzzy nature of the fuzzy heart as well. All right. So first things first, we're going to take our template, cut out the heart, and you're going to center it on your front fabric square. After you do that, all you need to do 
I pinned it in place so it wouldn't go anywhere. And you can see I folded my template in half and I also folded my fabric in half. That way I can really make sure that my heart is centered along the fabric length. And then you can do the same for the fabric width as well, or you can just use a ruler to mark it. Once you have your template in place, pin it in place so it doesn't shift and just simply trace around your heart template. Now we're gonna deal with the cuddle. So I have just a remnant of cuddle. This is really reminiscent of what would have been or what is in our mega mystery box. Um, it's a little bit longer, the piece uh, that's in the box. So you might have to resize your heart a little bit um, or you, know, you could make two hearts on your pillow and kind of cut your Lux cuddle in half. Now, when you are cutting it, I cut it from the wrong side so that the kind of meshy backing um, is facing up. And after you cut it, you can run it through your serger to kind of seal up all four edges. You're still gonna get some flyaways, but I have a lint roller handy when I'm doing projects like this. So right after I serge the edges, I can run over uh, the edges of the fabric and my cutting surface with that lint roller. And it really, really helps tame the shedding that happens when you cut this fabric. So that's really my biggest recommendation for how to deal <laughs> with this problem. But just know, you know, ha have your workstation and your sewing area kind of tidy when you start this because it will start flying away and attaching to other things in your room. So if you kind of tidy up before you're dealing with it, then you can easily lint roll most of those flyaways away. If you don't have a serger, you can zigzag along those edges. But honestly, if you don't have a serger, I would cut this. You can also use a rotary cutter from the backside to get a really nice, um, you know, cut edge. I would cut it and then turn it over, put the salvi on top, which I'm gonna tell you in a moment. And then once the salvi is on top and we've secured that, the edges are gonna be kind of secured to the salvi as well. Then you can kind of pick up your sandwich, move it over to the sewing machine and lint roll your cutting surface. All right, so speaking of the salvi, bravo, love me some salvi. This is original sulky salvi. There are three Salvies that we have. Well, there's actually five, <laughs> but there are three film-like water-soluble Salvies at sulky.com. There's original Salvi, which is just called Salvi. There's super Salvi, and then there's ultra Salvi. Original Salvi is what we use as a topper on our embroidery projects. So what you would use on top of your sleep mask before you do this embroidery. It flattens the pile of the fabric. That way, when you add your machine embroidery, the stitches sit up on top of that pile and you don't have little flyaways within the fabric so that you can see your beautiful design. Without the Salvi, these threads would just sink right into the pile and you'd have all these flyaways going around it. So, Solvi Original is what we're using for this. Super Solvi is twice the thickness of Original Solvi. And then Ultra Solvi is four times as thick as regular Solvi. So for this, we just need a light Solvi. Uh, and it's gonna help us tear it away when we're done. We're using it to tame those flyaways to tame the stretch that these fabrics sometimes have and to make sure they're nice and flat while we're doing the sewing and that the little fibers don't get in the way of our needle or our vision or our thread work. So what we're gonna do is take our square or rectangle, what have you, of the Lux Cuddle fabric, put it right side up on our cutting surface. Then we're gonna take a little bit larger square of Solvi and spray the Solvi away from the Lux Cuddle with KK2000 
temporary spray adhesive. That's right, you can use the spray adhesive on the Solvi and it will not start dissolving it. Pretty great. Also, when you spray the Solvi, rather than spraying the fabric, when we go to tear away the Solvi and then ultimately, you know, remove the excess with water, the KK2000 will go away with the stabilizer. Whereas had we sprayed the Lux Cuddle to put our Solvi on top, the Lux Cuddle would absorb some of that temporary spray adhesive, making it kind of sticky until it is then removed or dissipates into the air because the KK2000 is air soluble. So we want to spray the Solvi rather than spraying the Cuddle fabric. Spray the Solvi, and then you're going to center it over the top of the Lux Cuddle. And since the Solvi is a little bit larger of a square, it's going to kind of not really seal, but it's going to contain those fuzzy edges of the fabric. So now we have a sandwich of our Lux Cuddle with the Solvi on top. So for this pillow, I also have one piece of what I called lining fabric. And it really helps to have this additional interlining of fabric. It helps minimize the show through of the edges of our Lux Cuddle when we do the completed pillow. It also helps sandwich that Lux Cuddle so that when we're stuffing it and you know, or putting our pillow form in, in the end, it's not hitting the edges of that Lux Cuddle and making more flyaways and shedding happen. So we're going to have our lining fabric. You can really put it face up or face down. It doesn't even matter. You can use a piece of muslin. You don't have to use a piece of cotton fabric um, or, you know, a piece of, you know, fancy quilting cotton is what I meant. Um, you can have just a piece of muslin if you happen to have one or a, you know, piece of scrap fabric that you have that you have no idea what you're going to do with. Put that on your flat work surface and then you're going to center and you'll want to cut that piece exactly the same size as your outer pillow pieces. Then you're going to center your Lux Cuddle Sandwich with the Solvi on top on that lining fabric. Now we're gonna place our front fabric that has our heart cut out over the top of that lining fabric and we're gonna pin through the layers pretty close to that heart edge so that nothing shifts out of place and our Lux Cuddle is sandwiched between those outer fabric layers. So the lining and then our front fabric. Now we can sew our heart. So I mentioned this is a raw edge applique. So what I did was I actually used a little bit heavier weight thread than what I used to construct the pillow because here's where we can add a little bit more embellishment. I used the 30 weight sulky poly sparkle thread to sew my heart applique. And you're just gonna position your needle about an eighth of an inch away from your cut edge and stitch around the heart. I stitched around it twice because I was using poly sparkle and I really wanted the sparkle to kind of come through a little bit better. In the bobbin, I just have 50 weight cotton thread because there's no sense in using my decorative metallic thread when nobody's gonna see the backside of my heart applique. So I did two rows of stitching and I actually purposely did not put the stitching one on top of the other. I kind of did a sketchier stitching of the heart and I'll show you that in a little bit. For this, if you don't want a little bit of that raw edge from the quilting cotton, which honestly is completely hidden once you fluff, fluff up your Lux Cuddle, but if that raw edge bothers you, you can do a zigzag stitch, you can do a blanket stitch, you can do a decorative stitch of your choice, you can do a satin stitch along this raw edge. 
completely up to you. Um, all right, Kathy is saying, what type of stitch did you use for reverse applique? So, yep, as I mentioned, I did a straight stitch and I went over it twice. But you can choose the decorative stitch of your choice. You're still going to have that raw edge of the fabric, but if you do a satin stitch edge, it'll cover that up entirely because, as we know, satin stitches are a lot closer together, um, so they would completely cover that raw edge. So that is up to you. And here is what my two rows of stitching looks like. So you can see I didn't place them right on top of each other. I kind of purposely went around in a more sketchy manner. Um, and the poly sparkle just has a little bit of sparkle to it. You could certainly use sulky hollow shimmer or sliver thread for some different sparkly looks. I love the look of a silver sparkle with the Lux Cuddle. It just kind of adds a little bit of glitz and fun to the pillow, but you could certainly use the 50 weight cotton and have it match your top fabric, and that way your thread will just blend in and it'll be all about the Lux Cuddle in the end. So totally up to you on that as well. All right. I think I'm missing a step here, but that's okay. So after we stitch the heart, the pillow begins to come together really quickly. Now we're going to leave the solvi intact in the center of the heart until the very end. But the solvi that is within those layers that is between, you know, our lining fabric and our outer fabric with the heart cut out, we're just going to tear that away beyond the stitching that we just did. That way there's no solvi in between those layers and we only have the solvi remaining within the heart. It's just going to help, you know, corral all of the fuzz and, you know, texture and bulk until we're all finished. So before we add our backing fabric, we are going to tear away that solvi layer within the two layers only. Then we are going to place our back fabric over the front and we're going to sew all four edges, leaving an opening either for, well, leaving an opening for turning. And the size of your opening is going to depend on whether you're using a polyfill stuffing, which is what I did, because that way I can make the pillow whatever size I want. Or if you want to use a pillow form, or maybe you're covering an existing pillow or a pillow from the holidays, you'll want a little bit larger opening along the lower edge of the pillow so that you can insert that pillow form. All right. So make sure you have an opening for turning and you're going to sew the whole perimeter of the pillow. Then we need to clip the corners up to, but obviously not through, the corners of the pillow. And you can kind of trim those seam allowances along the corner as well. Now we're going to turn our pillow right side out. And if you don't have one of our sulky multi-purpose turning tools yet, it's so great for poking out those corners without going through them. So make sure you're using the larger end of the multi-purpose turning tool. You can see it kind of looks like an egg and one side is a little bit skinnier than the other. So you can run this along the seams of your pillow after turning it right side out, making sure that your seams are nice and flat and straight and looking great. And then you can go in with the smaller uh, side of the tool and just gently go around those corners and make sure that all the fabric is poked out along those. Um, so this is a really great tool if you don't have one yet. They're about 10 bucks at sulky.com. You will use it for so many things. The smaller end is really great as a stiletto. If you're ironing small things and you don't want to get your fingers burnt, you can hold this on there. You can use this to guide bulkier fabrics under the presser foot. Um, that's why it's called a multi-purpose tool because there's so many different things you can do with it. It also has nice little grippies on either end. So whether you're using the really fine point or the larger egg-shaped point, you have grippers for your hands. 
Um, it's just a really, really great tool. So that's what you see here on the pillow here. Then we are going to stuff it. So notice I still have the salvi around the heart and I'm stuffing the pillow. I make sure to stuff all four corners. Now, all four corners first and then fill out the rest. If you're using an existing pillow or pillow form, I still recommend putting a little bit of poly, polyester fiber fill or fiber fill of your choice up into the corners before you put in your existing pillow. It just fills out the pillow um, much nicer. And sometimes when we're using an existing pillow, it might have a little bit of wear to it. So it can be like saggy on one side, usually the upper edge. You can just fill in your uh, pillow case or pillow covering along that upper seam in addition to the corners. Then when you put the pillow in there, it's nice and plump to your liking. So once you have it um, as plump as you desire, then we've got to close the opening with a little bit of hand sewing. And I really recommend just a whip stitch or slip stitch. It's only about a five inch opening, maybe a little bit bigger if you're uh, using an existing pillow or pillow form. Um, but don't skip the hand sewing on this. It really does make a difference when you're working with a pillow. Just fold those uh, seam allowances into the inside and just hand sew that shut. And then you can kind of distribute the fullness of the polyester fiber fill or your pillow form a little bit and make it, you know, as plump as you desire. So now we've got to get rid of this salvi that is showing on our Lux cuddle. So what I do is I just kind of get it started. Um, I kind of poked the salvi with my tiny little curved tip squeezers, my other um, favorite notion at sulky.com, because these fine tip points um, can get into the salvi without damaging the fabric underneath. So just be careful with it so that you don't mar the fabric or snag it in any way and poke through the salvi a little bit, maybe a little bit closer to the stitching line than I did here in this photo. So get it started and then you can just simply tear it away along your stitching line. If you have any little bits of salvi remaining after you have done this, you can take a saturated, just with water, little Q-tip or cotton swab and just kind of dab it along your stitching line. And then the little bits of salvi that you have left over will just lift right away. That is the beauty of using salvi for this. It just, you know, especially if you have two rows of stitching, it'll be nice and perforated for you so that you can easily tear it away. And then our Lux Cuddle is revealed and you can just kind of brush it with your fingers, let it come to life, brush it along your raw edge of your fabric so that it kind of conceals that a little bit. The sparkly thread will come through along the edges and your pillow is complete. So you can see the great texture that you get. Here it is on my couch and it's just the cutest thing. For Valentine's Day and beyond, you don't just have to, you know, use this for um, Valentine's Day, but it certainly is great for the holiday. Really, really sweet for a kid's bedroom as well, any time of year. And in this picture, you can really see the texture of that Lux Cuddle and how it just looks so 3D popping off of the surface of the pillow. I think it's just so adorably cute. Um, some people have asked about the raw edge of the fabric. And as I mentioned, you can use a different stitch if the raw edge of the fabric is bothering you. Now, I do raw edge applique quite a bit. Um, and even when I launder pillows and things like this, you do get a little bit of fraying along the edge of the fabric. And that's really part of the design of raw edge applique. Um, but if that does bother you, you can certainly do a satin stitch. Um, for your applique stitching. And that will cover up that raw edge and kind of seal it up a little bit more for you. You can also choose a no fray fabric 
instead of using a quilting cotton fabric, which is what I used here. So for your outer fabric, you could choose a fleece. Uh, you could even choose a wool felt. Um, you could choose sulky felty if you wanted to make something a little bit smaller because the sulky felty rolls are not that wide. So you would need to kind of adjust your dimensions. Um, so, you know, get creative, but if that raw edge um, sort of fray look bothers you, um, try a different stitch for the applique or use a no fray fabric, even if it's just for the outer um, front of the pillow. And then maybe you pair that with a quilting cotton on the back. You know, it could be a scrappy look pillow. Um, so just some ideas there. Uh, Karen says, watch the nap of the cuddle for the heart to go down. That's a great point. So before uh, adding the solvy, you want to kind of pet your Lux Cuddle fabric so the nap is going in a downward direction. And then place your solvy on top. And then make sure that your fabric stays in that direction when you add your upper fabric. And that way when all is revealed, your nap is going down and it's a nice pleasing look to the end result. So thank you for that tip. Um, let's see. Love the pillow. Thank you. Denise says, how about cork? Cork is definitely a no fray fabric. You're not going to get that kind of cuddly feel that you get with this particular, uh, you know, with using quilting cottons, of course. But if you're just looking for a decorative pillow, um, that really that's all it is, is decoration. It's not something you would really snuggle up to. Then sure. Try using some cork and see how you like it. Then you can take the heart that you cut out of the cork and then go use it on, you know, to create another applique. You just have to do some careful cutting when you're cutting out the um, heart so that you can keep it intact. I'm all about getting the most out of fabrics like cork and faux leather, and things like that, because they are on the pricey side. So thinking about that, um, I could see the heart in pink felty too. That's a great point. If you don't want to work with the cuddle um, and you want that fuzzy heart look, you could swap up the heart fabric, you know, use pink felty for the heart um, or even just a different quilting cotton. You wouldn't have that sort of 3D look of the fuzzy heart, but it's still a reverse applique project and it's still rather simple to sew um, and it would be really adorable that way as well. Uh, Jana says, I like the idea of using different fabrics. Be sure to put in your comments, your takes on the project, your questions in the comments in the live chat, because as long as you are engaging with the post here or the live stream, I should say, you are automatically eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is a three yard pack of Solvy stabilizer. So you can try this for yourself with that three yard pack, you'll have plenty to create a couple of pillows, if not a set of five, probably <laughs> with a three yard pack at least. Um, so yes, be sure that you are commenting, using the chat, giving me the, those emojis. Um, and then I will pick one winner at random from everybody who is doing those things. And that winner will receive a three yard pack of Sulky Solvy Stabilizer. All right. Karen says you could use cuddle three for the pillow and Lux cuddle for the heart and the whole thing would be soft. Great idea. Love that. Mary says I'm envisioning a funky cuddle heart on a purse. Great idea. So really you could change this up and make it into a tote bag. You know, leave your uh, upper edge open, hem it, add some straps and you've got your funky, fuzzy heart tote bag. Great idea. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Mona says the pillow is wonderful. I've never tried putting it together this way. Could be pretty in so many different colors. Definitely. And excited to try reverse applique. Oh, Christy has a great idea. She says, I think I might add free hand arrow on either side of the heart. I need the practice at freehand stitching. So that's a really cute idea. Do some little free motion embroidery 
add an arrow to either side of the heart. Such a cute idea. I love that we can come together and bring our own takes on the project. That's what this is all about. All right. I'm going to try this as a tote. Mary has that idea too. Perfect. All right. Wow, that is great gifting. Thank you so much. The pillow is so cute. Definitely could see making it for my granddaughter. Love that. I love Salvi and Cuddle. I mean, I love these fabrics so much and they really can be intimidating, especially after it gets cut at the fabric store. By the time you get it home, it's in your car, it's in your driveway, it's on your clothes. Uh, so <laughs> if you do plan on having the fabric store cut you a piece of this type of fabric, bring a zip top bag with you to the store if you remember, because after it's cut, you can put it in that bag, seal it up, and then you don't have to deal with all that shedding until you're at your cutting table and you have your lint roller handy and you're ready to sew it. And as I mentioned, take a step and either serge finish or zigzag finish those edges to kind of tame that shed while you're working with the fabric. It's really a great tip, especially for making a large um, like blanket or throw with this type of fabric too. That can really help. Okay. Mindy says you could also line the open heart fabric first, turn it and press, and then fi finish out the pillow. Yes. If you don't want that raw edge, you could certainly, you know, kind of fold the edges of the heart to the wrong side, give it a good press. Um, around those curves, you will need to notch into those curves. So you want to make your heart a little bit smaller to take into account that seam allowance and then clip into that every quarter inch or so, fold those edges to the wrong side, give it a nice press. Um, you could even use maybe some double-sided basting tape or some uh, perfect applique fusible web for the edges of the heart. And that way you don't have that raw edge of the fabric. And when you place your uh, Lux cuddle beneath it, you will have that finished edge. So great ideas as well. All right. Just making sure I've addressed most of, oh, Kristen has a great idea. She's saying, let's do the same pillow with peep shapes for Easter. Oh, so cute. Love that idea. Really, really great. You could also do like a star um, instead of a heart, especially if you're making this for, you know, a little girl's room, like someone suggested, maybe they, you know, like stars or moons or a moon and star, another really cute idea. And then you have this pop out of your appliques. So great. Uh, this would be a great project to work on with a new young one learning to sew. I love that. Uh, need a broken heart pillow. Just kidding, <laughs> but it might be popular. Hey, whatever floats your boat. I love that idea too. You never know. <laughs> Ooh, maybe you could make BFF pillows. Okay, so my girls are super into the BFF, you know, broken heart necklaces. You have one half, your friend has the other, right? Super popular in the 80s when I was a kid and now it's coming back around. My girls are so into it. So maybe you have one pillow that has one side of the heart, another pillow that has the other, and it's the B fry est ends. Get it? best friends. Love that. You know, if you have twins who share a room, you might need this on each one of their beds. Really cute idea. <laughs> Colleen says, where are your pom-poms? You always add them. Ugh, what was I thinking? I love a pom-pom edging, especially on a pillow. So you could add those to your pillow and that would be adorable because anything with pom-poms is just taken to that adorable level, in my opinion. Love me some pom-poms. <laughs> All right. Does your site have overall descriptions of the various stabilizers? Great question, Kathy. We do actually. There's an entire resources section of our website. If you look at the top navigation after you go to sulky.com, you'll see resources. 
click on that, and not only do we have information on our stabilizers and all of the thread lines, um, as well as color charts, conversion charts, things like this, you'll also find our stabilizer selector tool. This thing is so cool. If you click on it, it will take you to a page where you can plug in the fabric you're working with, the technique you're doing, and it will spit out recommended stabilizers for your project. So it's a great starting point if you're like, I don't know how to do this, I've never done this type of embroidery before, where do I start? Go to the stabilizer selector tool at sulky.com. It will give you some recommendations and not only that, but it will explain why it's giving you that recommendation. And there might be some instances where there are two or maybe even three stabilizers recommended for you. So it's really helpful to read, you know, each one. It might just be that three would be suitable for your project, but it depends on how you want to remove it. So for example, it might say, well, this tearaway could work, this water soluble could work, and this cutaway could work. So if you want to be able to tear away the stabilizer, choose this one. If your fabric can withstand water, choose this one, etc. So it's an awesome tool. I even still use it knowing everything that I know about sulky stabilizers. Sometimes I think to myself, you know, I'm going to cross-reference what I think is the right recipe for my project with the stabilizer selector tool and see if I'm right or see if I'm on the right track. Um, so it's a really, really great resource. Highly recommend it, especially if you're new to embroidery as well. Kathy says, I can never have too many pillows or tote bags. I agree. Love it. All right. And Kathy says, I get caught up in watching and forget to comment. No problem. Also make sure when you are commenting or giving me those emojis, if you want to be eligible for today's prize, which is that three yard pack of Sulky Solvi stabilizer, you also need to like our page on Facebook if you're watching there or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching there. As long as you've done those two things, I'll be able to contact you privately um, and then you will know if, you know, you are the winner of the prize. Um, and also I put a little something, something in there so that you will know it's me and not a crazy bot. But if you are ever um, in doubt, err on the side of caution, always email our customer service team just to make sure uh, we will never ask for your information when we tell you that you have won and we will give you a unique way of contacting us um, so that, you know, we're trying to rule out all the craziness that happens in that regard. All right. Mary Lou says, can you leave the upper part of the heart open for a reading pillow? Oh, that's an interesting take on the project. So, I mean, you certainly can, but you're going to have to finish the back of the heart because, you know, obviously then you want it to be like a pocket. Um, so that's going to involve a little bit more sewing and finishing detail than what I've included here. All right. Um, I have some scraps so I could make smaller hearts. Absolutely. This pillow would look really cute with, let's say, three rows of three hearts, you know, all popping out at you. So if you did that, I would keep the Lux Cuddle the same dimensions as our outer pillow fabric and that lining so that when you cut away or when you have all those, you know, rows of hearts cut away, you don't have all these separate pieces of the cuddle. You're just, you know, basically using the same one um, and you don't have to trim it up, less mess, less shedding, all that type of stuff. And it's also going to give you a little bit more texture to your pillow and loft uh, once you stuff it as well, because you'll have that interior like Lux cuddle interlining almost. All right. Leslie says cuddle fabric is actually easy to work with. Don't let the shedding issue stop you. I agree. We should never be held back by shedding because we've got to work with these fun, fabulously luxurious feeling fabrics. Um, and you don't need a huge piece for this project or even if you did a pair of pillows, you really don't need 
a huge cut of the fabric. So you can keep it rather economical and have some fun with it as well. All right. Can you use two pieces of sulky, I'm assuming salvi for a larger heart? Um, I mean, you can. You can overlap them as well. And when you go to tear them away, they will come away independently. I wouldn't try uh, tearing them away um, together just so that your seam um, isn't compromised, you know, doesn't want to pop out because you're, you know, trying to tear away two layers. Um, but if you're your salvi width isn't as large as you need it to be. You can kind of overlap them over the heart. I don't see why that would be a problem. All right, and adding an invisible zipper would be easy for an insert. Absolutely, you can definitely do a zipper at the bottom lower edge. You can also do an envelope closure along the back of the pillow as well if you want to um, you know, use an insert or an existing pillow. I love the idea of using an existing pillow you can make your holiday pillows last year round just by creating new covers for them. And then you don't have to store them in a tote in your basement or wherever, you know, for the entire year until you get them out again. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to, um, you know, get more mileage out of those types of things. Oh, yes, Louisa, thank you so much. So she says you could add embroidery before making the pillow. That would be pretty. I did want to talk about this, so thank you for getting me back on track. You could certainly embroider on your Lux Cuddle fabric before you add it to your outer fabric, which has the cutout. Now, what you would do is embroider it with the Solvi on top, because we always want to use Solvi when we're embroidering on a textured fabric like this. Make sure you, you know, pet your fabric, making the nap go downward, put your salvi on top, do your machine embroidery, leave the salvi on there, and then proceed with the pillow construction. If you have centered your embroidery design, then you can take your outer fabric and make sure that your design is nice and centered inside the heart. You could add a little conversation heart saying, you know, um, cuddle me, love you, text me, whatever you want it to say. You could put a monogram, you could put another heart design in the center, would be really pretty with some additional thread work. So thank you for saying that because I did want to mention how you could embellish this or take it a step further, aside from pom-poms, of course, because those are always welcome in my opinion. <laughs> All right. And yes, I agree. A Sherpa heart would also be fun, nice and cuddly, um, give you those warm, fuzzy, you know, feelings that we all want from Valentine's Day as well. Okay. So many amazing ideas. A snowman for winter with button eyes. Absolutely. Definitely change up the shape. You could even put um, a big, you know, letter of someone's first name would be really cute, especially for a kid's room or even a baby's room on, you know, the, the rocking chair. Uh, would be really, really cute as well. So many ideas. Thank you all for putting your ideas in the comments and in the chat here. I can't even keep up with them. There's so many. So <laughs> I just really love that you're taking this and making it your own. And again, that is what So What is all about, is coming together and kind of diving into a project and seeing what more we could do with it, you know? Um, and if you like it as is, it's all there for you on the Sulky blog at blog.sulky.com. I link directly to the post. You can get all the dimensions, the sewing instructions, uh, the heart template, everything is there on the blog for you. All right. So I think I'm all caught up with the questions, but if you do have questions that I did not answer during today's episode, be sure to email us at info at sulky.com and we will get back to you. Um, also, you will notice in the description of today's post at the very end is where to register for our 3D wall hanging session with Designs by Juju. You can click right on over and register. You'll get all the designs that you need in five sizes, four sizes, lots of sizes to use all different kinds of hoop sizes. You'll also get access to the videos on February 13th as well as written posts and instructions from Julie for putting this sweet project together. 
So that is in the bottom of today's description, as well as a link for the 3D wall hanging kit. And there's also a link for our craft tours trip to Ireland. I will be hosting a group of lovely humans, hopefully one of them is you, to Ireland, and we will be having just the time of our lives. So if you're interested in traveling with me, traveling with Sulky in 2024, our Ireland trip is coming up first in the end of July, and then we will also be headed to Bali, where we will learn how to batik our own fabrics. We will be going to an elephant sanctuary. There's so many things on the itinerary, just bucket list items that you will absolutely love. So you can check out those two trips um, using the link in the bottom of today's description. Head on over there, check out their payment plans, uh, talk to them directly about how you can get on one of the sulky tours. They are truly, truly trips of a lifetime. And I would love to hang out with you, get to know you a little bit better um, and see the sites in Ireland and beyond. So be sure to check out those tours as well. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Get creative, make some fuzzy hearts and show me what you're making on our Facebook group, Sulky Stitch and Post. If you're not a part of that group, you can head on over there, ask to join, and then you will be along for the ride and you can post pictures of your creations and we can chit chat about other sewing ideas. You can get great coupons from Sulky and special offers over there as well. All right, Carrie says, Ireland is just the best country to travel. So welcoming. I can't wait to experience it and experience it hopefully with some of you as well. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next week on another So What?